Hey, what's up guys? I'm Theo Joe and a lot of crazy tech news happened this week, so that's what we're going to go over today. And if you didn't already tell, I switched back to three times a week video instead of daily videos because it was like many, many times more work and it didn't make any changes and I think people were getting bored of it. So we're going to go back to doing three times a week and what I'm going to do is make one video a week summarizing all the coolest tech news instead of doing it every single day. So that's what this video is, the best tech news from this week. Let's get started. So first up, a question. How many cores does your CPU have? What if I told you that AMD is working on a CPU that will have 32 cores? 32. And it's actually going to be for their Naples server processor line. So it's not going to be for like desktop use or anything like that. But it is true, 32 cores, and I believe that is the largest number of cores that is out in a processor that's been announced today. However, I do think Intel is working on their own that's probably going to also have 32 cores in their Xeon line. So it's not too much of a surprise for a server processor to have this many cores because servers typically use a lot more multi-threaded applications as opposed to gaming or desktop applications that can handle high frequency purposes. So this is going to be more for low frequency like in the 2 gigahertz range as opposed to gaming where you want the high frequency but it only uses a couple cores. That wouldn't help if you have 32 if a program is only going to be using one or two. But it's still very impressive because right now Intel's highest amount of cores is 28 in one of their Xeon lines. So if they don't release 32, then it's possible that AMD could surpass them in yet another statistic. But I think Intel is going to catch up pretty soon if they do that. Next up, Nintendo launched their brand new system, the Switch, which is actually a huge success, massive sales. I believe they said it was the fastest selling system that Nintendo has ever made, although there have been some problems with this new launch that a lot of people have been having, so it wasn't exactly a very smooth launch. For example, there's a lot of people reporting that the controllers are just not working at all. There's system crashes, glitches for graphics, game breaking bugs, stuff that's really bizarre, just doesn't respond. And another one, for example, even with the hardware, like the controllers, there's these covers for the controllers and if you put it on the wrong way, they get stuck and you basically can't remove it without a tool to go in there and pry it off and a lot of people put it on the wrong way. It's not a lot of well thought out hardware and also the stand that comes with it, there's a plastic stand and a lot of people have been saying if you slide the switch into the official stand it comes with, it scratches the screen. So a lot of issues people have been having but I guess despite that there's still a lot of success although Nintendo hasn't really addressed many of these issues. It seems like they kind of launched it without really finishing it and they haven't even launched the online service yet which is going to come in the fall. So we're going to have to see how this turns out. If you're an early adopter and you're, it's working out for you that's great but if you are someone who maybe wants to wait until all the kinks are worked out this is probably one to wait on. And also in other gaming news, the PS4 Pro update, the 4.5, has a new boost mode, which is essentially going to be an overclock, which supposedly increases the performance of games by increasing the clock of the CPU and GPU. And people have been saying it does make a big difference. One of the issues a lot of people had with the PS4 Pro is when games upscaled to 4K, they wouldn't even be able to run at 30 FPS. So this supposedly fixes that and even on older games this will work because I mean you're running at a higher clock then it doesn't matter whether the game had an update to support it or not it's going to run better. So if you do have a PS4 or even a PS4 Pro the 4.5 is out you can update it get some better performance out of it and some reports have said it's about a 30% increase so pretty significant. Next up IBM made an announcement that they conducted an experiment that could potentially pave the way for a totally new method for data storage in the future. What they did is they used a very expensive scientific apparatus to magnetize a single atom in one way or the other. And then they were able to freeze it that way. So what they basically did is store one bit of information. They said, all right, this is gonna be oriented this way and we're gonna keep it there and then that is gonna be a one or whatever. So the idea is that now they can use every single atom, one atom to store a bit Whereas modern hard drives typically need 100,000 atoms 
to store a bit because it's a completely different type of mechanism. So if this were to be actually implemented at a 100% efficiency, then that would mean that you would be able to store 100,000 times more data in the same amount of space. Now, going forward, that probably wouldn't be the case. You know, they would need a lot more in there to actually store the data and magnetize each thing. But we're talking potentially thousands of times more storage density that we could use with this technology. And now, like I mentioned, they had to use a huge scientific apparatus to do it with just once. But I mean, the idea, it's just more of a proof of concept to show that it can work in the future. All right, next, turns out that Tinder has a very exclusive invite only Tinder select mode that us mere mortals never even knew about. I mean, the idea is that it's for the most elite users on the platform, whether they're like rich people, CEOs, models, or just the top users or members of the Illuminati. And then when you do this, you get invited to Tinder Select where you can filter for other Tinder Select users and the app looks a little bit different. You can switch between the modes and it shows a blue S instead of the normal app interface. And apparently it's been around for about six months, although there has been no official word by Tinder themselves. This has just been leaked by users, I guess. It's not like Tinder has gone out and advertised this at all. So this is pretty much a very secret program that they're running. So obviously if anyone who works at Tinder is looking for some uh, users to test this out, <laughs> let me know. Next up, Windows. It's been for the longest time the most used operating system ever, basically but that might be about to change. An organization called StatCounter, which does a lot of statistics on usage of different operating systems and other computers online, did a report recently where they measured how many people use Android and Windows online. They found that Android users took up 37.4% of web traffic and Windows was 38.6%. And this trend has been continuing where Windows has been declining and Android has been increasing so we're right at the point where Android is probably gonna pass Windows in terms of number of users online. And I wouldn't say this is really a surprise at all. I mean, more people use their phones every day for everything, really. And Android has been increasing in web traffic as the years have gone on. iOS has kind of been a bit steady. I guess not many people have been getting more iPhones, but Android has been increasing and taken up that Windows share. So this pretty much just goes to show why it's so important for websites to use mobile friendly versions with more people using it every day. You know, if your website doesn't support mobile, then I mean, what are you doing? You're just gonna lose out on so much traffic. Next up, in a report that everybody saw coming and no one's gonna be surprised by, turns out that now more people are streaming their content online as opposed to watching and paying for cable TV. In this new report, it says that 68% of people watch content by either streaming free or paid content, whereas 67% of people pay for cable TV. So they finally overtaken. Cable TV has been declining, everything else has been increasing, and I mean, it's not really a surprise because most cable TV just absolutely sucks. And it's actually kind of a big difference. The drop in cable viewers was 1%, but the increase in streaming viewers was like 6%. So streaming went up big time. And I think this trend is going to continue, especially since a lot of young people are just cutting cords, not getting cable because it's so expensive, especially since now we got uh, YouTube TV coming out. I mean, that's still the same stuff, but it is streaming. It's not through the cable company you just get through YouTube itself. So I think this is a big change. These cable companies better make a change that actually uh, you know, helps consumers instead of ringing us for money. I think this is pretty great. Next story, in case you were wondering, Google has said that yes, they will be releasing a Pixel phone this year, a Pixel 2 or whatever they're gonna call it. Not sure why this really surprises everyone. I mean, phone manufacturers these days, they all release it once a year. So I guess there's not really anything else to say about that. Just take it for what it is, they're making a new phone. And the final news story is that Google is gonna be launching Gmail add-ons. So if you don't know, their Docs suite, which has the word processor, spreadsheets, and that sort of thing, that already has add-ons where websites like QuickBooks can have integration with their own programs, and now you're gonna be able to see that on Gmail. So they're actually opening it up, they're launching it very soon in beta, I don't think it's really out yet. And I guess the idea is that developers would be able to write the program once and it would work across all platforms, iOS, Android, 
desktop because it would be with Gmail itself, not having to use your phone apps or anything like that. And I think this could be really cool for potentially adding additional functionality to Gmail. One example they did give was with QuickBooks. If maybe you want to integrate it with QuickBooks Online or whatever, and then you could automatically send invoices or something like that. So stuff like that where it kind of works in the background, does stuff automatically without you having to mess with it, the add-on handles a lot of stuff. It is still just launching in beta though, so if you're a developer then you can actually sign up for the beta if you want to get started on it. So those are some of the coolest news stories this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can click on those even if you're on a phone. And of course, if you guys like this video, let me know what you think in the comments and like the video. And also subscribe. I make new videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, three times a week, so it should be worth it. So again, thank you guys for watching, and as usual, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.